So let us all uh, look into that uh, Psalm number 3. So Psalm number 3, we already read it uh, uh, in the beginning. And uh, Psalm number 3 is the Psalm of David. Um, David and the Sangirthana and the number of Kelkumbo Tandam Sindhi country Kaidim, David or Sangirthanam Eridum Ball, Tandajiwatlura or Uru experience under or background under. So every Sam which is written by David has a, has a, has a background or uh, it has a, I mean, something which, I mean, happened behind it. Okay. So that's the reason that, I mean, Sam is to David was uh, writing every Sam. Okay. Every experiences and when, uh, I mean, Sam is David was going through, you know, he he put it as a poem or, a, or as a song and the people of Israel they were singing together and worshipping God for the glory of God for the protection of God for the provision of God for the almighty God's work in their life Amen. so that's the reason that uh, we are also reading the Psalms in our churches hallelujah we are also reading the Psalms in our churches and we are increased by the word of God and the experience of the Psalmist to worship the Lord to praise the name of the Lord hallelujah this morning I I'm, I mean, I personally believe that we have many things to remember and praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have something to remember and praise the name of the Lord, lift your hands and praise. Thank God for everything that you have received. Hallelujah. Praise God. So as we go through, I mean, Psalm number three. Yes. Psalm number three. We understand the main topic that we can find out from that Psalm is peace in the time of peril. Peace in the time of peril. Prasthangudu nadivil samadhanathinde samadhanathya anipuvikyan kariyindu dhenganiyana. Peace in the time of peril. You know, uh, we know that this is, the, this is the prayer of David. This is the prayer of David. And he begins his prayer with, O oh Lord. Right? Look into that psalm. Okay, look into that psalm. Psalm number 3. Now, David is beginning his psalm with a word which is, Lord. Okay, and especially all oh Lord, he is calling all oh Lord, and we understand that that Lord L O R D is in big letter in all the translations, or uh, it's a, it's an uppercase. It, it's an uppercase. Uh, I mean, written there L O R D. Okay, and also in uh, all the places when I mean uh, David is writing about Lord, uh, if uh, there is no space, you can you can arrange somebody. You know, there are people coming up. Yeah, there are some um, chairs back in here. You can sit one. Okay, it's okay. Listen, all of us. Let's, let's listen to that word. I mean, so it says that you know the Lord L O R D in the uppercase, and also whenever it is written in in Bible and especially in the Psalms, the G is capital letter or uppercase. Okay. G is uppercase. Okay, so what's the reason of that? Especially, you know, when you go to uh, maybe Psalm number 1, verse uh, uh, 2. Okay, L-O-R-D is in the, in the uppercase. And also, in Psalm number 2, verse 2, L-O-R-D is there. And in Psalm number 3, uh, also, uh, that L-O-R-D, verse 7, and Psalm number 4, uh, verse 3. Hello, RD is in I mean uppercase, and all the Sams. When you, when you when you find out all these things, we understand everywhere the L O R D or L at least L or G for the God is in uppercase. You know, I was just thinking about why this is written like that in in Hebrew in Hebrew Bible also. You know, the Hebrew Bible it's written Adonai. Adonai is the is the word which is used for L O R D Lord, amen. And that meaning is sovereign God or Almighty God, the Almighty God or the sovereign God. That means David is not talking about a local God or a man-made God or human God or an idol or statue, but he is speaking about the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and Almighty God. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that a God whom we serve is not at all a local God? Or a God is not made by man. A Lord is not a God or goddesses. You know, the people in, uh, in, in different places, they are worshipping many gods and goddesses. Okay, But we are worshipping the Almighty God. That's the reason it is written. 
Adonai. Adonai. I mean, our God is an almighty God and our God is the great God, powerful God. Hallelujah. And that is the reason that it is written that God is a great God. Amen. So we are serving a great God this morning. And also, especially when you go through that psalm, it is the, the, the word sailor. The word sailor is used three times in this uh, psalm. The word sailor is used three times, you know, at the end of verse 2 and at the end of verse 4 and at the end of verse 8. Okay, look into that psalm. The word sailor is written there and mentioned there in verse 2 and verse 4 and verse 5. Maybe end of the verse 2, verse 4 and verse 8. It's a musical notation to the Hebrew poem uh, to, to show that you have to pause there or you have to pause there whenever wh wherever it is written Selah you have to pause there or you have to stop there and you have to meditate that portion once again read that portion once again meditate that portion once again then you will go into the depth of the meaning of that word I mean, whenever the sailor is written, I mean, we have to read that once again, repeat it once again, meditate on that, and you are going to get more and more revelations from the word of God. Hallelujah. So this is what we have to do whenever we are reading the Bible, especially the Psalms. I mean, go through that Psalm, read that portion once again, try to meditate upon that, and God will speak to you personally. How many of you believe that? How I many of you have the experience of meditating that word and God was speaking to you? I mean, have that experience. I mean, read that words and read that words once again. Read that portion once again and God's spirit will speak to you. Hallelujah. That's what we understand. And whenever the sailor is written there, you pause there or stop there and read it once again and you will get many things. Especially, let us divide these eight verses into three sections or three, three strophes okay um you can see yes i mean yeah three strophes are there okay three sections are there for this for this i mean same psalm number three okay the first thing is the first section is verses two one and two verses one and two that is his insecurity or his uncertainty david was feeling insecurity insecurity and uncertainty when he was writing this psalm, in the beginning of the writing of this psalm, he was feeling, oh, I am insecure. There is nobody to, to care for me. There is nobody to support me. There is nobody to encourage me. There is nobody to help me. That is the situation when, I mean, David was writing this psalm in verses 1 and 2. And when we go to the second section or second strophe, we understand in verses 3 and 4, we can see the assurance of David. The assurance of David in verses 3 and 4. And in the third section, in the third strophe, we see that in verses 5 and 5 to 8, his peace in peril. His peace in peril. And in the first section, David is describing how big his problem is, how big his trouble is, how, how big his pain is. When David is trying to explain and describe all those things that how big is my pain, how big is my trouble, how big is my problems. Man, we know the situation of, uh, uh, of David on those days was not good at all. Okay? It was, it was, a, it was a I mean, bad situation that he was going through. When we, we read uh, in that verse, it's written, Oh Lord, how my adversaries have increased. That means the adversaries were increasing. Many are rising up, up against me, right? Many are rising against me. Okay, and, and second verse. Many are saying of, of my soul, there is no deliverance for him in God. Okay, so what is what we uh, understand from that verse is his adversaries were increasing. Many were rising against him. Many were questioning him about his personal relationship with God, with the Almighty God. He had a personal relationship with God. But many people are asking questions and questioning him. Oh, do you have that relationship? Then why you are suffering in this way? You say that you are trusting in the Almighty God and you, I mean, call that God as, a, as an Adonai or Almighty God, Sovereign Lord. Then why you are suffering these problems? So they are questioning his relationship with Almighty God. And he was experiencing the humiliation. 
the experience of humiliation and all of a sudden things turned upside down all of a sudden things turned upside down and he was a king but he had to he had to leave the throne and fleeing away towards wilderness okay just i mean leaving the throne there leaving that uh, royal throne there and just i mean just running away from there and running towards the wilderness and we understand his own son absalom rebelled against him this is a situation of david when he was writing this uh, writing this uh, psalm you know his own son absalom rebelled against him and also we read that a man called shimei from the family of king saul cursed at david and he was throwing stones at him and many of his friends had abandoned him and they sided with the rebellious son absalom and also one of his sons was murdered and a daughter was raped and now that murderer son is trying to defeat his own father david this is the situation of david when he was writing this psalm you know there are there are the, 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 the these are the terrible situation that he had been going through and he is describing now in this particular verse is that how big is my pain and how big is my problem ende 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 prashnangal etra valiyadana ende problems etra valiyadana nu than adhyamayittu rendu vakyangal explain cheyan try cheyukiyana hallelujah and in the second section okay the first section he is describing how big is my problem how big is my trouble how big is my pain but now he comes to the second section second i mean uh, i mean a trophy that we understand that i mean the the, the there he, he is proclaiming something that how big and how great and how good and how powerful is my god hallelujah the second section and the third section is very much important for the believers of god and here we understand david the psalmist is proclaiming how good is my god how great is my god how almighty is my god and how powerful is my god hallelujah read that maybe verses 3 and 4 Amen. He said that when the Lord, L-O-R-D, in uppercase, the Lord is my shield and he is my glory and one who lifts my head above. And I was crying to the Lord with my voice and he answered me from his holy mountain. Hallelujah. What a great verse it is, you know. And he was having that assurance he said, in his heart and he was saying, God is my glory. The Almighty God is my glory. And he can deliver me and he can rescue me from all kinds of problems. This is the assurance of a believer. And he says that, I mean, I have the experience that uh, the Lord is my strength in my troubles and uh, the Lord is my always with me in all my, I mean, problems. And when we go to this third section, that is verses 5 to 8. In the third section, verses 5 to 8, he experienced the peace of God even in the midst of the per perils and the pain. Okay. This is a wonderful thing that we have to understand. You know, there are many troubles for the people of God. There are many problems for the people of God. There will be many sufferings in the, in the lives of the people. But when we are going through the perils, when we are going through the troubles, when we are I mean, going through the difficult situation, we have to experience the peace of God. We have to experience the peace of God. I mean, if you are, I mean, just experience that peace of God when you are I mean, under many dangerous things in your, in your life. Hallelujah. The people, those who are having that experience of, I mean, I have enough peace of God in me and I have, I'm, I'm, I'm peaceful. And even though I'm going through the troubles in my life, I have the peace of God. I'm sleeping very nicely in the night. Hallelujah. So this is what we are going to see. You know, think about, uh, I mean, this man, David, you know, he prayed, right? David prayed and he went to, went to the bed. With the confidence in God that knowing that the Lord will wake me up in peace. Men, etra berke vishwas onda. Namma dorangan pogum bol. Enne raavile deivam. Amen samadhanatoda unarthu vandu vishwasatoda gora namma prarthi chitta gada kambuva. 
Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, even in even though in the midst of all this situation, Hallelujah, he slept well. Do you understand? He slept very well. You know that his bed was not in the palace, but it was in the wilderness. You know that? His bed in those days was not in the palace, but his bed, he was sleeping in the wilderness. Okay? He had to leave all the facilities in the throne, in the royal throne, and left everything, and he is running away from that place to the wilderness. Amen? So even in the midst of that, even in the midst of that, I mean, he slept well. Why? 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 And how he could sleep well in the time of the wilderness, in the time of the peril, in the time of the pain. Only because he had the assurance and he had the confidence that I mean, my Lord is able to keep me. My Lord is able to protect me. And my Lord is able to give, my, the, give me the deliverance and the security I mean, for my life. Hallelujah. This should be the, 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 the confidence of a person, those who are believing in the Lord. Iyuri Vishwasam, Iyuri Atma Dhairiyam, Namada Agathun Dairi Kate, Engil Matra, I mean, Munboti Yatra and Kariyatolu. You know, when we think about Peter, I mean, Peter in Acts chapter 12, you know, when we read Acts chapter 12, we understand he was bound with two chains, right? He was bound with two chains and soldiers were around him, guards in front of the door to watch over the prison. But Peter went asleep in night and angel had to come there to wake him up. Listen very carefully. You know, he, he, he was going through a difficult situation. Apostle Peter was arrested and he was under chain. And there were many guards and there were many soldiers around him. You know, there, the, the situation was very bad. But in the night... He was very nicely sleeping, right? No, it, it is written very clearly that he was sleeping very nicely without thinking anything because he had the confidence that even though I am inside the prison, I am inside the jail, I mean, the Lord will send his angel to me to wake me up. He was not troubled about that. He was not troubled about that. And he was not thinking anything about I mean, what is going to happen in the future or what is going to happen tomorrow. The problem today for every one of us is Anxious about many things in tomorrow. Praise Lord. Remember one thing. If you are if you have the confidence in God, if you have the assurance about your future, I mean that you are believing that, I mean, my future is in the hands of God. My future in the hands of God. And we will say, Oh Lord, I am not troubled about anything that I know that my God is the Almighty God. My God is the I mean, sovereign God. Hallelujah. That's the reason in Philippians chapters 4, verse 6 and, 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says that Paul says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard you, hearts, your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What is the meaning of that? No, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. We are praying in the presence of God. Yes, we are submitting our supplication in the presence of God. And we are thanking God for the answer of, uh, answer for the prayer, right? We are thanking God. Remember? The same time this is happening. We are praying. We are requesting. Yes, we are, I mean, uh, 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 I mean putting our supplication in the presence of God. And at the same time, we are thanking God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, even when we start to pray, that time itself we say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you, Lord, for giving that for me. Right? You know, what's the reason of that? And we believe that the peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding. That means our understanding is very limited. Our understanding is very limited. Our power is limited. Our, our, our strength is limited. I mean, our knowledge is limited. We don't have that much wisdom to understand what is going to happen in the future. But I know that I have the abundance of the peace of God in me, that that will surpass the understanding of a human being. 
Hallelujah. This morning, let me encourage every one of us this morning here, sitting here. Hallelujah. You have the peace of God which can surpass the understanding, the human understanding, the human wisdom, the human strength, the human I mean, ability. I mean, God's presence is with you and the peace of God is with you. And again, in the last verse, in the last verse, uh, uh, verse 8, he says that salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessings be upon your people. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. That means, you no, know, he is proclaiming that salvation belongs to the Lord and he was not depending on his friends. He was not depending on his supporters. He was not depending on any army, any of them. I mean, but he believed the victory comes from the Lord alone. The safety comes from the Lord alone. The salvation comes from the Lord alone. This morning, hallelujah, as David is closing his psalm number three with that word that the salvation comes from the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. This morning, let me tell you one thing that every word, every situation, whatever we are going through, I mean, the presence of God is there. The peace of God will, I mean, surround you and the peace of God will, I mean, I mean, encourage you to, to, to overcome all the situation of the peril, all the situation of the, I mean, uh, the, the pain in your, in your life. So this morning, let us all surrender life to the presence of God and let us pray, O oh Lord, I'm committing myself in the hands of God. Father, we need your presence, O oh Lord. We need your peace, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We know, we know that in the first section, what happened? David was just thinking about how great is his problem. How great is his pain. How great is his trouble. But in the second section when he comes, he says that I have the assurance. I know that how big is my God. How great is my God. How almighty is my God. How powerful is my God. Hallelujah. This is the assurance and confidence of a believer. And poorly we understand and he was experiencing the peace of God which was, I mean, surpassing the, the, the uh, 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 understanding of a human uh, which was surpassing, I mean, surpassing the, the problems of a person, the mental situation of a person and that is the reason that he says that the salvation comes from the Lord and the victory comes from the Lord. This morning when the victory is coming from the Lord the salvation is coming from the Lord and that's the reason that we say we are saved people, right? We are born again people. How to be born again? When a person receives Jesus as his personal savior and the Lord, when that person is becoming a born again person. Then leaving all the sinful nature and saying to the Lord, oh Lord, I am becoming a child of God. I want to become a child of God and I am born again. We are the children of God. Then those people, those who are born again, those who are born again, and those who are, I mean, I mean, uh, following the commandments of God, and those who are, I mean, always following and obeying the word of God. Those people can say that, I mean, even in today, you know, in the in the Old Testament, during the time of David, he was speaking about the salvation. It was not the salvation which is written in the, in the New Testament. Okay, so he was talking about the salvation means the deliverance from that problem. Okay, the, 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 I mean, uh, how to rescue from this problem. That was, the, that was the, I mean, situation of David on those days. But today, for the people of God, we have many deliverance and we are getting many miracles from the Lord. We are getting many deliverance from the Lord. At the same time, the, the greatest, greatest miracle is that we are born again. We got a chance and we got experience to, to born again experience. Okay, And we become the children of God. And we are experiencing the, the deliverance in this world. At the same time, we will experience the fullness of the salvation when Jesus Christ comes on the earth. Hallelujah. This is the expectation. This is the hope of every person this morning. Let's close our eyes in the presence of God and pray together. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of God. Hallelujah. Let us uh, just think about, I mean, how, I mean, David was facing all his situations, the bad situations, all the, I mean, troubles and situations. Hallelujah. How he was going through all those things, uh, I mean, which had, uh, I mean, I mean, offended him in this, in his life. Uh, but uh, we understand he had the assurance. He had the confidence and he says that I mean I can face all these things because I mean the Lord will strengthen me the Lord will give me the peace hallelujah the Lord can the peace of God can surpass all my understanding hallelujah I have some solution in my mind man whenever we are going through the problems and troubles we say I have some solution in my mind but that will not work out sometimes 
But God says that when God's presence, when God's peace comes upon you, that will help you. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, that will help you to go through all these troubles and to overcome all the, I mean, peaceless situation, all the troublesome situation, and we will be, I mean, bringing glory unto the name of the Lord I mean, when we are blessed by the presence of God. Hallelujah. So let us all submit us from the mighty hand of God. Let us experience that peace, even in the midst of the peril, even in the midst of the trouble, in our lives and say that oh Lord we thank you for everything that we received from you 